Welcome everybody to another edition of the Hurry Up. I'm your host, Adam. Let's get into this. So, I was on Twitter, you know, where that could be. Said said something along the lines of Malik Neighbors. I'm, I would expect him to get 1,500 yards. Is that the reality? Probably not. Is that at my expectation? Yes. Am I thinking he's coming in to be some savior of this offense? No. That's not what it is. You got you to gotta understand. You want to you dig into the mind? Here's the mind. So you draft a guy sixth overall, no matter what position it is, you're hoping that guy ends up in Canton, Ohio. That's what you're hoping. That's what your hope is. Look at Dave Gettleman. He even said the words when he drafted a running back. He said, we have a Hall of Fame talent player at number two. Well, guess what? Is Barkley, was Barkley box office? Was Barkley that dynamic of a player? Yes. Oh, but a running back's different. No, a running back's not different. Nobody expected, you know, maybe maybe it was me, but nobody in their right mind didn't expect Barkley to come out and, and be a beast. He came out in his first preseason game and ran for 68 yards. His first game of the year, he was a fucking, you know, draw. But... Was it, did we expect him to win rookie of the year? You're number two pick overall. We expect him to be in the conversation. He ended up winning it. Garrett Wilson ends up winning rookie of the year with 1,100 yards. There wasn't anybody else that was better than him, but 1,100 yards. Puka Nakua should have won rookie of the year, but C.J. Stroud came out and had a fucking phenomenal year. Okay? But to not expect a guy that was drafted sixth overall as opposed to a guy that was drafted in the fifth round to not have... To not come out and try to challenge for that rookie record, what are you doing? All right, is that is that the expectation of a player to come in here? Do I did I expect CJ Stroud to be rookie of the year? No, my expectations were low for those guys. For a skill position player, it's different. Are my expectation levels a little high? Yes. Do I think he should get fifteen hundred yards? Absolutely. In the right situation, he should be flirting with with Odell Beckham Jr. numbers. That's the type of talent that kid is. But the fact of the matter is, he probably won't make that. So people need to understand what expectation is versus reality. Okay, that's what they need to ex- understand. You want to put, if you want me to put the words realistic expectation, realistically, I think the kid's going to flirt with a thousand yards. That's what I think he's going to do, and that's not even a, a, a good thing these days. We got seventeen games flirting with a thousand yards. That's fifty nine. That's over fifty nine yards a game, almost sixty yards a game. Not even. To get a thousand, okay. So put that in perspective. This kid is supposed to be dynamic. He's supposed to come in and help you. Is he a savior? No. But there's no point in drafting a receiver six overall if you don't have high expectations, okay. My expectation for this kid is he needs to come in and be a beast. That's what it needs to be. Period. And I, I don't care who's throwing him the fucking football because I got I got told by people that he needs to be. This, he needs to be that. He's the, the reason we drew and draft the quarterback, all this stuff. And now when I put those expectations on in the certain the certain circle that I'm running with, they're clowning me saying, oh, well, yeah, that, he's not supposed to come in here and have 1,600. That's a, that's, a, that's a ridiculous feat. Yet Je- Justin Jefferson, who wasn't drafted sixth overall, got 1,400. Yet Puka Nakua, who wasn't drafted even in the first round, got 1,400 yards. What's the difference? Oh, the quarterback is different. Well, guess what? I understand the quarterback. I get that he is not the greatest quarterback in the world. As a matter of fact, you know my stance on the quarterback. I don't even think the quarterback is going to make it through the season. But my expect my expectations is I have high expectations that I stand for this kid. Is it does it mean Malik Neighbors was a bad choice? No. Do I think it was a bad choice? No. Do I think it was the right choice? No. I don't think it was the right choice. I think the right choice, if you want me to preach patience is a quarterback. They didn't go that route. I can't, you can't dwell on the past that much. We'll come back to see. But my expectation for this kid should be, he should be fighting for a rookie of the year. If that's not your expectation for this kid, then I don't know what it is. The reality is, is he going to get there with Daniel Jones? Probably not. He probably is not going to be in that realm with Daniel Jones as quarterback. Nothing against Daniel. It's just that's just the reality of it. Is Vegas doesn't even think he's going to get eclipse nine hundred yards. I think he should be flirting with a thousand, which isn't even that big of a feat. But people want to clown me and say, "Oh, fifteen hundred yards is ridiculous. No receiver has ever done that." Blah 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 blah. Yet, yet Odell probably could have surpassed that in his in his rookie year, fourteenth overall pick, and Justin Jefferson at fourteen hundred yards. And Puka Nakua was twenty five yards away. Um, less than that, excuse me, 16 yards away from having 1,000, 1,500 yards. But a sixth overall pick, a sixth overall pick, a guy that plays a skill position, skill position that blew up the combine, that blew everything up, the expectation is 1,000 yards? 
Reality should be, yeah, he should get a thousand yards. Expectation should be this guy should end up in Canton, Ohio, starting from day one, because you need impact rookies. That's what happens when you pick a guy in the top ten outside of quarterback, which is which is a little different because you're not your expectation level is to come in and, and not sink. That's what you're supposed to do. But here we are. You can't even put expectations on a kid because people think, oh, it's too lofty of a goal. That guy was a sixth overall pick. The pressure was put on when the Giants drafted him sixth overall. Not me putting the pressure on him. The Giants put the pressure on him. Now he's got to go out and perform, and he should be. If you think anything of this kid and you think he's good, he should be in, in the conversation for rookie of the year. Will he win it? Probably not because you got Williams, D- Jaden Daniels, Drake May, Marvin Harrison, four guys in front of him. Should he be in that conversation when the season's all said and done and the dust settles? Yes. And if that guy does happen to crack the 1,500-yard mark by hook or by crook, you'll know. You'll know. That guy needs to be him. Justin Jefferson's on Hall of Fame tear. He had 1,400 yards. You know, yeah, I get it. Guys get 900 yards here, 900 yards there. I, I understand they need development, but but people don't get it. They don't understand. We're not talking about a Devontae Adams who was drafted in the second round or DK Metcalf. Those expectations for those guys should be lower. But when you have a guy that was drafted in the top 10 of your draft class and your expectation is, well, he just needs to get 1,000 yards, what are we doing? What are we doing? Reality is, yeah, you're probably going to get 1,000 yards or close to it. Expectations should be there. Expectations should be for Brian Burns to have 16 sacks. Will he have 16 sacks? Probably not. He'll probably have like end up with 11 or 10 or 11. But the expectation should be he should be the sack leader. You pay that guy $100 million, he should lead the league in sacks. You pay a quarterback $160 million, his skill position players should be up through the roof. That's what I'm saying. Are these expectations gaudy? Are they outlandish? A little bit. But that's the whole point about an expectation. When you go in and buy the lottery ticket or go to the casino, do you expect to lose money? Do you expect to win? You expect to win. That's why you go there. The reality is you lose money. When you go get them scratchers or play the, the lottery, you're not expecting to lose. You're not buying and saying, well, I'm going to lose this money. But, you know, most people say you, you need skin in the game. You can't, you can't win if you're not in, right? So what your expectation when you play the lottery is – Hi, oh, I want to win the lottery. You're probably even fantasizing and pontificating about what you're going to do with the money when you win. But then when you lose, reality is those are all fantasies anyways. The expectation was reality like, oh, well, I expected to lose anyways. That was the, that I expected to win, but I lost. That was the reality of it. Expectation is when you buy a lottery ticket or go to the casino, not to lose. My expectation for a player picked in the top 10, I expect him to be a decent player. I expect him to be a really good player and fight to be one of the top in the NFL in the rookie class. That's what you should be fighting for. And if it's not, that's the reality of it all. The reality is he probably is going to get 1,000 yards at best. Expectations for a guy like that should be 1,500 yards. Let's separate. We're going to separate the two. So all you people that are, you know, clowning people on Twitter, oh, you got to listen to the words that they speak and not just run. This has been another edition of the Herb. I'm your host, Adam. I'm out.